This walk doesn't get old, baby. This walk doesn't get old. Got a little friend with me. Netless, part <laughs> two. No team in the SEC can beat South Carolina, and the rest of the nation better watch out for the Gamecocks. Create a checklist. Put whatever you want. South Carolina will check the box. Go, y'all. Game day. You can't have no drop off. It's going to three weapons. Three, 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 four. Business. 26 straight wins for South Carolina. Number one team in the nation. Very solid, very prepared. This fan base is for the culture. Senior setting the tone for this Gamecock crew. The number one freshman class in the nation. It has all come together at the right time. What Don Staley has done, I still am amazed. The champs wear garnet this year in the SEC. The nation. No other choice but to do it. And we bring it all the way back to Coma and where it belongs. This is what it's about, and it's only going to continue to grow. But this one's for the culture. You ready? Congratulations, y'all. Congratulations. Y'all really deserve uh, um, this blessing. You did. And um, when you win championships like you've won, it, it really makes you reflect on um, our year, although it's not over, but it makes you reflect. I thank you for believing in this. Every single one of you guys, thank you for believing in this. And thank yourselves. Because I, I, don't, I don't think you thank yourselves enough for what you put into it. To win this league the way you did, to win the tournament the way you did. When you're able to do that in this conference, it puts you in a position to, to compete for a national championship. That's why I like it. It's a super proud moment to, to do this. Because it, it's not... It's not an easy thing. Proud of our coaching staff. They've done a hell of a job putting us in a position to win a lot of basketball games, and we're not done yet. coronavirus story which is exponentially growing before our eyes. The NBA is suspending the season. This is people's lives at stake. This isn't about basketball. This isn't about the Mavericks. This is, this is a pandemic, a global pandemic. The NBA has made this move, but they are at this point the only league in this country that has completely suspended what they're yeah. doing. Mark, I want to, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I'm just told in my ear that Mark Emmert has just announced that the men's and women's tournaments, and well, along with all winter sports, have been canceled. This is about slowing the spread of this and about flattening the curve of this. And the NCAA has to be, has no other choice but to be a responsible global citizen here. No other choice. Joined now by Dawn Staley, the women's coach at South Carolina, the number one ranked team in the country. Dawn, thank you for spending some time with us. What was your reaction when you heard that the women's championship would be canceled this year? You could kind of feel it building up to that. You could just feel it. And, then, and although in the back of your, your head and your mind, you don't, you want, you don't want that to be. Um, but I was dreading um, having to text our, our team, especially our seniors, that they won't be able to realize their dreams after, after having you know, somewhat of a dream season for them. We were talked about a lot, meaning the whole culture of women's basketball, it was a thing this particular season. I mean, it was highly competitive. You had, you know, so many different number one teams in the country. You had so many upsets. You had so many other uh, programs on the rise and doing historical things. And this, by far, probably would have been the most competitive women's basketball NCAA tournament ever. And for it to abruptly end, I mean, it's, I'm sitting here like I have nothing to do.
they were all expected to come back trying to win a, another national championship, and it, you know, it won't be. But, Risa, I have to say this, and I'm probably going to stir up, you know, some folks. We ended the season as the number one team in the country with the best record in the country, the only team that won their regular season and conference tournament undefeated. If they're going to pass out a national championship trophy, we got our hands out at South Carolina. Oh, somebody called me. I'm sorry. Hello? Just have you on the screen. Okay. Oh, that's perfect. I kind of saw it coming, but I was hoping, you know, it wouldn't happen because I saw when they, uh, you know, canceled the rest of the uh, NBA season. So I kind of, you know, I, I was kind of hoping that they were going to do it how they said uh at least just no fans, you know, no fans, although that was heartbreaking too. The Leo who texted the group chat was like, what if they cancel the NCAA tournament? I was like, no, they can't do that. Like, there's, there's no way they could do that. Like, this is, this this happens every year. This is March Madness. This is what is supposed to happen. Like, everybody enjoys sports. And so, we're just saying like, what if, what if, what if? You really get to thinking deep down in your heart that it's, it's not gonna happen. Um, and you're seeing, that the influx of people being impacted with, you know, positive uh, test results and death. Coach had texted us in the group chat, and, you know, just told us what it was, and I think it was a, it was a very sad moment for everybody. But uh, we made sure we all shared the way we felt with each other, just to comfort each other and make each other feel better. Ty was the first one to to respond, and she was like, "Oh my God." Um, and then everybody else started chiming in, like, I feel bad for Ty, I feel bad for Kiki, how are we going to end the season this way? And it was all the, the pain. I could feel the pain in each and every response. We had such a great season. Like, we worked so hard, and we were doing it for Ty and Kiki. Like, they came in freshman year, they won a national championship, and then senior year, we were trying to give them the same thing that they came in with. So, I mean, that really hurt. But in the end, we know it's what's best for the rest of the country. You just have to be able to just protect people the best way they can. Obviously, sports is a big reason why we exist, quite frankly. Um, um, but when people are losing their lives at the magnitude that, you know, that's occurring, you know, there's obviously a, a bigger, you know, a bigger picture to be concerned with. I like I had like, I had all these emotions, so I felt like I needed to tweet and I tweeted out to like our fans, the staff and the university with a picture of me and just saying like how I'm heartbroken at the fact that like it's gonna be my like I didn't know it was gonna be my last time signing like an autograph or taking a picture or shooting a basketball in Colonial Life Arena. And yeah, kind of just saying my goodbyes. It's so surreal, you know, that we, we don't have an NCAA tournament, but yet we're still very much um, impacted in, in ways in which we, it, unimaginable to hold down the number one spot for longer than any team in the country to have a point guard with a story career to have Kiki in her maturation process over her career, to have the number one recruiting class in the country. I was always confident, but I was cautious, truly cautious when it came to this team because there were so many unknowns. Way too much Baylor in this game. The number one overall seed in this tournament, looking very much like that. South Carolina's season ends with 23 wins and 10 losses.
obviously one in somewhere else like Tampa, but we just didn't have enough. I'm pretty encouraged by the returning players, and I'm encouraged by you know some of the future players that we have coming into our program that we'll have enough experience if we're able to get back to this level of basketball. They're young. It's not what we're used to from her teams no. the last four or five years, but every program goes through this. Well, sure you do. And if your rebuilding is to be playing on today. <laughs> yeah, right. Years, exactly right. Let's keep that in perspective. I mean, look, at just got the number one recruiting class in the country coming in. They're already starting. This is a team whose expectations will be very, very high next year, uh, and they'll be well beyond yeah. Sweet 16. 2019 McDonald's All-American Game. The East squad, a couple South Carolina Gamecocks in there, three of them as a matter of fact. Now, Aaliyah Boston, six foot five. She is one of three players to head to South Carolina to play for Don Staley. The real big winners out of the McDonald's class this year. Rebuild, Zaya Cook, Aaliyah Boston, freshman, freshman, freshman. First time I saw Aaliyah Boston, I was in Chicago at an AAU event, and I just saw this crowd. When I got to the court, I saw basically a woman amongst girls. That was Aaliyah Boston. I'm a very physical, um, dominant post player. I enjoy like physicality. So I'm also starting to like, work on my outside game, so a little versatile. She really hasn't even touched the surface of what she's going to become. She plays a role for us that we haven't had in a long time, besides Asia Wilson, when Asia was probably a junior and senior. Bree, I think she's our X Factor. Uh, Bree does a little bit of everything. Me, I like to get the, you call them like the dirty things or whatever, like to, you know, get those rebounds, you know, push the ball out, you know, hit, rim runs. Gaia, love her to death. She has a swagger, she has confidence. I feel like I'm an all-around player, but now I'm just getting, I'm a lot more mature with my game. Although she's very young, she has a sense of when to turn things up. Players who compete at a high level, they have an incredible ability to take it up a notch or two or three or four when needed. Let me just tell you about that possession. It's flowing. You stop the flow to call week out. Play basketball. You guys are listening. You guys got a lot of energy in this gym. You make this the best part of our day. I didn't know if they could live up to a number one ranking and what that was. But I know their impact was felt. And it was felt in the tune of having three people transfer. It wasn't about replacing statistics. It was more about replacing culture. It wasn't a team first agenda. Kiki Herbert Harrigan, uh, when she decided to transfer, that felt a little bit different. When she did finally enter her name in the report, I kind of cried a little bit. I kind of took it personal just because I was just like, and Kiki, like, we were supposed to be right or die, like, we were supposed to come in here and leave together. I reached out to Kiki uh, because I just felt that Kiki did not want to leave us. And it was more so because of the tears when she was saying it. My reason for transferring, it was more personal. Um, it was just a little uh, miscommunication between me and Coach. So I just thought, I'm going to give her a week. I'm going to give myself a week. And I'm just going to process everything. I called her. I'm like, hey, Kiki, what, what's really going on? And she basically said that I acted like I didn't care. She wanted to be a big part of, of our program in her senior year because she waited. You know, Asia was here. Now was her time. Once we got to get on the phone and, you know, talk things out, and we were able to get past that. Because I know in the back of my mind, that's who I wanted to be. And I told her I didn't want her to leave. I felt like she was a big part of our program. And I want to see this thing through. And I want to see you go into the WNBA draft. Come on, come on, Kiki. Nice, Kiki, nice. Nice, Kiki, nice. When she finally came back, I think we grew closer. Just as the aspect of, because we're the only two seniors. We knew the ups and downs of the program. We've been through everything together. I love playing with Ty. She puts you in the right spots where she knows you're, you know, effective at. I think she's like the best point guard in college basketball. 
I love Ty Harris. I, I think uh, you've watched her mature from her freshman year, and she does what I call answer the three W's. Who to get the ball to, when and where. We bring in Felicia and Johnny Allen. I just find that their life skill sessions are meaningful, meaningful to me and meaningful to our players uh, because she and Johnny, they figure out a way to get them to go beneath the surface. Part of what we do is try to figure out not just what drives winning, but what needs to be each person's role in helping to drive or elevate their program to a place where they all can be proud. For the last 10 years, we've worked with Dr. Line and Don Staley. This year, we noticed that time, when we put something in the room that was a discussion, she talked to the team. Her confidence in her voice, and when she stepped up, the body language of her teammates when she responded or when she spoke. They lean in, yeah. they absolutely lean in. They always said that I could be a leader, and that's kind of my thing to do. I already knew, like, I want to be a leader, and um, that's what I was here to do. I was the calm in the storm. And I think that those freshmen knew that they could absolutely trust her. I don't think we've ever worked with a team where it was more evident that they were going to follow wherever Ty was able to lead them. Ty plays like an old pro that's been around the game, that really understands the pulse of our team, and she reads things incredibly well. She's a point guard extraordinaire. That means a lot just because she is one of the best point guards to ever play. And two, it just shows that she trusts me and she has confidence in me. I knew Ty would be, you know, our starting point guard. I knew Kiki would be our starting um, small forward. I knew that. And then I was going to let everybody else work their way in from a blank canvas. Get the work, baby. That work. That work, baby. That work. Let's go. Keep it going. Don't tire. Stay down. Stay down. Stay down. Stay down. Stay Take it down. Slow down a little bit, okay? It's good. You're good. You're good. I honestly just think we listen. Whatever coach says, we listen to it, and we also listen to each other. They adjusted very well. I mean, I, I think their high school careers had all the hype and stuff like that, but they didn't let that get to them. Um, they came in here wanting to learn, listen, and they respect all of us, and we want to see each other be great, and I think that's what comes with a winning team. I feel like part of that is getting along. You know, we get along on and off the court. Everybody has a great, fun personality, like especially in practice, like it's fun. We, we actually enjoy it and have fun while I'm learning, you know, and trying to get better every day. One, two, three, we all again. We all again. Yeah. This is what you do. somebody steps up to a challenge. That's the reason why our team continues to progress. The young ones are willing to listen and learn and grow. Um, we're gonna have something special. Don Staley's crew already has the town buzzing with the top ranked recruiting class set to make their Garnet and Black debuts this year. It's a class that features three McDonald's All-Americans and four of the nation's top 11 players. Coach Staley says the members of her signing class will have to embrace the high expectations. I was cautious, truly cautious when it came to this team because there were so many unknowns. It will take a perfect block 
You come along with this, he's coming up. He's got to be perfect. Then the freshman class just came with so much potential. know whether they would live up to it or not. So the unknowns kept me cautious, but confident. South Carolina Gamecocks opened their season against the Hornets of Alabama State. Wait is over for that top ranked recruiting class that Dawn Staley has brought in, and she's gonna start three of those freshmen tonight. High post to Boston, 15 footer, good. It goes back to rain. Shot blocked by Boston. Boston with another block on the other end. Keeps it inside the Boston. Spins, shoots, and scores. Boston is everywhere tonight. And the game got pulling away here in the second half. Aliyah was pretty close to getting a triple-double by the end of the third quarter. Aliyah Boston, the freshman with a 12 points, 10 rebounds, and has eight blocks. I was torn whether or not to put her back in. And then I was like, you don't get triple doubles very often in your career, let alone as a freshman. So I said, you know, let me put her back in. 15 footer is blocked by Boston and she claims the rebound. She's one block away from a triple double. Driving left side, there's the block from Boston. And there it is, triple double for the freshman. What a night for the rookie. 12 points, 12 rebounds, and 10 blocks. That just showed me like she's very special. To see her do that, you know, she's breaking records already as a freshman. I didn't really think it was, like, that big of a, a deal until, like, after so, you no know, freshman's ever gotten a triple-double in their debut, and I was like, oh, that's kind of a big deal. It's much tougher for the Gamecocks. Travel to Maryland for a big top-ten matchup. I saw the approach. I saw the potential in playing fast, playing together, playing unselfishly. You, you're going to be pushed. You're going to be pushed, OK? So I'm going to play as different than what we see. Maryland was probably the defining moment that I knew that we were pretty good. It's the earliest top 10 matchup in women's college basketball history. It's the first step of history that we're going to make. I just knew that it was destined for us to make history and win. Nice spin from Cook to find Boston. Kind of just turn the page. New season, new team, and they have a new team, and just kind of fight pound for pound. And they just don't handle the pressure of South Carolina's D. South Carolina really came in ready to make uh, their presence known, uh, and they did. Cook running the floor to fill the lane to get the three on two break. Boston, another big block. Jones running the floor, and Boston is able to clean it up for Aaliyah Boston. Really. I think I was just there when my teammates needed me. I was in help, and I did great blocking and rebounding. A 14-point lead on the road for a young South Carolina squad. South Carolina knows what their identity is. We have to make sure we respect every single opponent and we prep like we prep for Maryland. That's how you got to prep. Every single game, no matter who we're playing. OK? Good job. Good job, y'all. They got it done. So this team just took off and found their own identity. We on three. One, two, three. Three. It was a team in which was, was destined to, to do some great things. traveled to the Virgin Islands in Aaliyah Boston's hometown. The, this school is actually like kind of, it got hit hard by the storm. So it's, they're still, that's why like all these things are here because they can't really use the classrooms in there. Aaliyah found out that one of her high school teachers, who she was very, very close to, passed away. We ended up practicing later on. 
she got through practice, but then she was crying. After practice, Aaliyah's mom, aunt, all of her relatives brought in Thanksgiving dinner. So it was a good time for everybody, and it was a good time for Aaliyah because it occupied her mind. We're underway here at the Paradise Jam in St. Thomas in the U.S. Virgin Islands. Indiana Hoosiers, their highest rank ever, ranked 17th in the nation coming in. The Gamecocks sagging on the dribble driver, leaving the perimeter shooters wide open. And the Gamecocks come up empty. Oh, my, they're going to get a foul on Aaliyah Boston. That's three fouls on Boston, and she can't believe it. She tried to keep herself together, but she was an emotional wreck. Oh, and a bumping foul on Boston, and that's four on Boston, and we've got 5.42 to play in the third quarter. Ty Harris across the timeline and throws the ball away. Ty with another inexplicable turnover, and then a foul on the other end, and that's four on Ty. My goodness. I remember in the game, I think I had like three or four fouls, and she was like, you know we need you in this game so we can win. I shook my head, yeah, and then I think like maybe two, three minutes later, I got my fifth hours. Just better decision than being a better leader. The concern for South Carolina is when Ty Harris is not in the game, how is the offense run and on that possession? Obviously not well. Nobody really played well. I was heated. I was hot because I'm cautious for performances like that. We had a film session before we had shoot around. So I said, before we start, I just need to get, I had to get something off my chest. And they know, they know the look, they know the sound. And I, I began with Ty. I was like, Ty, you got to do a better job. You got to make better decisions. You got to lead this basketball team. I was confused on some part because I just felt like I tried my hardest to be a better leader, but obviously, I mean, she sees it from a different aspect. She's a coach and she knew what needed to be done. Once I said what I said, she started looking at the screen, which was nothing was on the screen. And I was just thinking and processing everything. The fact that she turned her head and looked the other way meant one thing. She heard me. And that's all I really want from our players is to be heard. We ended up going out and beating Washington State. A shot blocked by Kiki. Reverse layup is good. What a finish by Kiki. And then comes the Baylor game. It feels like a home game for the Gamecocks here in St. Thomas. Blocked shot by Kiki Herbert Harrigan. Oh, wow. Ty Harris feeling it. Ty Harris on fire underneath the Boston beats her man and lays it up and in. Baylor has gotten themselves back in this game with the fast break. Just keep it to single digits in the first half and you'll have a chance in the second half. I wanted to challenge this group. I don't know why besides the fact that we want to win a national championship. In order for you to do that, you have to get familiar with high quality teams across the country. Herbert Harrigan to the opposite side of the rim. What a shot. Boston there to clean it up. The crowd loves it. So if we beat Baylor by 15 points, we win the tournament. We, we would have ended up in third place. Once we went up by 13, the Baylor players walk off the court and towards their bench. So I'm like jumping up and, you know, I, I could be a third base coach. You know, everybody's waving her to go score the basket. And I'm like, you know, go. So she ended up making the basket and we all went crazy. The defending national champs go down in St. Thomas. Because South Carolina hit that last shot and won the game by 15, they win the Paradise Jam Championship. 
What a night. What a finish. It was a great win for us, for our entire program. What's in this room is, is, is special. It really is. If Even if you didn't play up the park, okay, if you had a night like this and we still can be able to rise above, that's special. That's truly special. If we're able to respond the way we did, that makes champions. When you're able to handle adverse situations and moments, have it catapult you to the, you know, to raise your game, that's what it takes to win a national championship. When you bring in the number one recruiting class, they have no idea what it is to succeed at this level. She was in her shot, which is fine. You gotta tell her before she's into her shot. They came in with the mindset of just winning. They put a lot of pressure on themselves to do that because when we win, they win. Let's go, baby, let's go, let's go, let's lock in. We know how we got a job. Come on, three, one, two, three. Yeah. They do so many things well, it's hard for them to be off. That's the beauty of South Carolina. It's a great win. It's a great win. You should be proud of it. There's no one, no one in the country, no one in the country has played the schedule that you played, and no one in the country has won as many um, games against quality opponents. So that's to be proud of. down again. Arizona State upsets number two, Oregon. Oregon State disappointed. That kind of tells the story of the day. Number one is a tough place to be. South Carolina has put together one of the best resumes in college basketball. They have ascended to the number one ranking. There's pressure in being number one, yes. But I, I, you know, I stress to our team, if we can be who we are for the 30 games that we've played, we're going to be okay. I think we're going to be in, in a really good place to continue to succeed in this season. They are the fourth different team to sit in that top spot already this year. We can't take anything for granted just because we're number one doesn't mean anything. Just live in the moment and uh, cherish it all. One, two, three, left. National attendance leaders, five years running, and they are ready to make some noise. Mississippi State and South Carolina, it's a top 10 showdown. This is going to be a well played game. Man, y'all see you, man. Stay tuned. What a terrific give and go. The kick out, Cook got a three. It's too easy. That's too easy for South Carolina. Harris to the hole, one-handed. Got to get back and set your defense. No excuse there for Mississippi State. They test you every position, every possession. After some struggles early, Mississippi State settling down nicely. Seven point swing for Mississippi State since Boston checked out with the two fouls. They're hard to guard. It's something that's been hard for us to guard uh, for quite some time. That's a way to compete and fight. That's a great jump. Vic Schaefer is all kinds of fired up. Down one at the break. I was just waiting for, for, for something to happen, a big play, a big three, a big steal. And, you know, you can look in their eyes and see that they are very much in the game, no matter what the score was. First lead of the night for the visitors. Rejected by Kiki. Tremendous play. Danbury again off the bounce. Same play, same result. What great patience by Mississippi State. Timeout, South Carolina. I felt like it was getting out of hand because nothing was working. We couldn't get any stops. 
and we couldn't get any baskets. And I just didn't feel confident enough that we could sustain and overcome the momentum of Mississippi State. So I called the timeout. So Ty comes over and she always stands on my left side. And she was like, we're all right. And I, and I heard it and I'm like, okay. I've been in that position before too, where we were down by a lot and ended up winning. So like, I kind of just try to calm the freshmen down and the underclassmen down. And I, I wasn't really expecting her to hear it really. It was kind of for my teammates. Ty doesn't really say much. She always, is, she's listening. I was like, all right. I was like, let us go. Boston cleans it up and roll. The cross, the bump, the kiss. Wow. And Carolina's back on top. When I know that, that people are watching, that's when I usually do my best. The gym, Colonial Life Arena, our fans were electric. They weren't going to let us lose. They were going to put enough energy in the building to the point where they were going to will us to win. Down one, who do you trust here? Harris. That's who you trust. That's who you go to. For first place in the SEC, you got to be strong with the ball here if you're Mississippi State. Zaya Cook with the pick. When they threw that ball up in the air, Zaya went back to her old tackle football days and intercepted that ball out of the air. South Carolina wins it. And the freshman comes up huge late. And it was one of the most exciting and electric plays that we've had all season long. <laughs> I think it's more than just the number one ranking. Dawn seems to truly enjoy this team. She loves this team. North Philly! I'm ready for my play. Who else? Oh, Ty. I, I, I'll stay here at Kip Oh, Zy. Oh. oh, who else? Oh, how long is my play? All right. The wait is over in Colombia, and the series has been very one-sided. He's 8-0, Gino. Perfect against South Carolina. Where we got? You know we need. I didn't really feel nervous. I was still cautious, but I was very confident that we were going to win this game. Really good defense by South Carolina. Rejected by Boston. I just felt our defense was going to hold up. The drought continues for Connecticut. They were really adamant about not giving us the threes that we normally get in the first quarter. Put us in a hole that we couldn't get out of. Harris is taking charge right now. That is a big swing. Ty Harris, stop, pop, got it. There was just a real maturity and toughness about South Carolina. The game has gone through Ty Harris. She wanted to win, and her performance uh, uh, was every indication of that. Appreciative and on their feet, looking for their first win ever over UConn. They turn it over for the seventh time. South Carolina played way better than Connecticut. That's allowed to happen once in a while. So how about you write that somewhere? This is just too easy. They are up 20 on the Huskies. Do you feel like you're the best team in the country? We're up there, I guess. I feel like we're up there. I feel like we're great contenders for the Final Four. And they're not number one in the country for no reason. person that loves our game this is what it's about and it's only going to continue to grow but this one's for the culture something inside of me told me to just say 
it was for the culture. And I, I do believe it was for the culture because our team, our team looks like most of the teams around the country. A team in which is still trying to break into the great traditions of the Yukons, the Notre Dames, the Baylors, the Tennessees, they're traditionally rich programs. To beat UConn, to get that monkey off our back was a, was a great moment. And we were able to do it our way, not really changing who we are, not really slowing the game down or taking the air out of the ball. We did it the way that we prepped and the way that we played all season long. That's the most gratifying feeling. Tonight from Dallas, the national title will change hands. McCowan blocked by Wilson, taken away by Davis. On the run, Gray tiptoeing in, yes. Davis now down to three. Her jumper, yes. Wilson again, powering in for two. Around and out, guess who with the rebound? Right back up! That is a championship play right there, young woman. The McGay Cox have their first ever women's basketball national championship. One of the things that, you know, drew Asia Wilson to us is that you have the makings of a national championship team in talent, attendance, and success. And it's important because we now know as a coaching staff how to navigate through a season to win another national championship. That speaks volumes to the young women that we bring into our program. Welcome to Greenville, South Carolina, to the 2020 SEC Women's Basketball Tournament. Dawn Staley and the number one team in the nation for South Carolina Gamecocks getting it going. Arkansas is not going to be an easy team to beat. One team moving on to Sunday. Who will it be? Ty Harris offensively is working. Got to get back in transition or South Carolina will make you pay. Pain points is where South Carolina can make a living. So far, South Carolina's done a nice job. Everything just happens faster against these guys. They're big, they're better. Destiny Henderson is one of those players who comes off the bench and gives it everything she has. <laughs> Destiny Henderson has been crushing it to her second three ball. She's up to 10. because she is on fire, a career high tonight. Time is going to run out, and the number one team in the nation has not lost to an SEC team this year. They are going to the SEC tournament final. I never would imagine us making more threes than they did, but we did. Yeah. You push the ball down their throats. We prep for a championship, okay? We're here, we might as well win. One wears maroon, one wears garnet. The rivalry growing every season between South Carolina and Mississippi State. It's easy to talk that talk. It's time now to go walk the walk. Let's go. Championship game, ladies, man. Let's go prepare for it. Let's take care of this. This is a big game for both teams, but for South Carolina, they're trying to make sure they get that number one overall seed in the NCAA tournament. Mississippi State was the one team that played them the closest. They have a, really a statement to make. Ty Harris fell Bill ahead. That's bully ball from number 12, Reveal. South Carolina thrives in transition. Kiki Herbert Harrigan is fired up right now. She brings the two, the attitude to South Carolina. Look at the ball through me for Carolina! Gosh, that's pretty. 
Perfection in the SEC regular season. Perfection in the conference tournament. For the fifth time, South Carolina is the SEC tournament champion. No team in the SEC can beat South Carolina, and the rest of the nation better watch out for the Gamecocks. With this breaking news, it took a little longer than expected for sure, but the NCAA canceling the men's and women's college basketball tournaments. There will be no March Madness in 2020. My initial feeling when the NCAA tournament got canceled was, I, I knew it was coming. I mean, it's not a good thing when the NBA suspends their season. I just feel so sad that we didn't see the culmination, you know, the culmination of this special year for South Carolina. I just feel like we got cut short. I went onto Twitter and then it was like right there, the first tweet I saw, it was like NCAA cancel tournament and I just started to cry. We kind of just like lost the words about it. And then like literally two minutes after that, Coach Danny texted us like, I'm sad for our seniors, I'm sad for the team. What does Ty and Kiki, you know, how do they end their careers in this manner? With the sixth pick in the 2020 WNBA draft, the Minnesota Lynx select Nakia Herbert Harrigan from the University of South Carolina. With the seventh pick in the 2020 WNBA draft, the Dallas Wings select Tayasha Harris from the University of South Carolina. We can utilize Ty's story and Kiki's story that if you just trust the process, things will turn out incredibly well for you. is bright in that we have some young talented players who believe in the process you know what it takes to make it this far i'm just going to continue to be a vocal leader and just continue to push my teammates we're capable of all of all of the things we're capable of this year um, nothing changes we're young so it's, it's going to be scary to see what we what we have in front of us We know what the makeup of this team is. We know the quality, we know the character, we know the hard work. What Don Staley has built puts them in a conversation to be part of the basketball royalty. It's that dream of being the program that is mentioned amongst the Yukons and the Notre Dames and the Baylors in the Tennessee. You just look at what she's done in terms of growing their fan base at a school that never had that kind of a fan support and one of the best conferences in the country. It is all of us that are within the women's basketball culture putting forth our game and making great decisions for the trajectory of our game. We did this for you. There's more history to be made. Y'all gonna see about it. Where we are today here at South Carolina, we are creating a culture for the culture of women's basketball.